Welcome to the Web3 Artist Spotlight. This episode was recorded on Friday, July 7th, 2023. This is Giancarlo, and now I'm going to turn it over to my co-host Jennifer to introduce our special guest for this episode. Hope you enjoy. Thank you. Sarkis is a prolific, intuitive painter, digital artist, photographer, and creator. Creating art is as much a part of life to Sarkis as breathing air. His art is expressive, free-flowing, and truly unique. His more recent collections, The Time Travelers, invites us to see ourselves as timeless and limitless beings. Sarkis's art is in the homes of many collectors worldwide, and he has exhibited his art in several in-person events in New York City. His social media posts are always rich in content and showcase his amazing talents. In addition to this, Sarkis is a healer, a cherished friend, and a valuable member of our community who holds space for anyone in need of healing and a listening ear. And with that, Giancarlo and I welcome Sarkis to the space. Wow, that was amazing. What an introduction. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate both of you guys. I appreciate everybody who's here. Um, I see Alyssa, Pinati, Anna, uh, Anastasia, um, Rock of Ages, and all the friends right here. Um, yeah, I'm just ex- really excited for this. I've been looking forward to this uh, interview for a while now. Um, I remember talking about the potential of doing this like a couple of months ago with uh, Jennifer. So it's been a long time coming and um, yeah, I'm ready. Uh, I mean, whatever you guys want to ask me, I'm ready to answer all the questions. (laughs) I'm an open book. Awesome. No, thank you so much, Sarkis. And we really appreciate having you as our guest here. And yeah, also definitely been looking forward to this space and, and getting to to know you on a more more personal level, even though we have already interacted a lot, I'm sure we'll we'll still uncover some some new things and it'll be a beautiful conversation. So, let's start it off with uh, maybe take you know five minutes and tell us a little bit more about yourself. Like you know who who is Sarkis, a little more about your story, your upbringing, and then how you eventually came into this whole Web three space. Cool. So, uh, I was born in Istanbul, Turkey. And um, I was born into a wonderful, loving family. Um, and, you know, there was a lot of uh, art and creativity in the household. Uh, we always watched, um, you know, creative uh, things. And we, we went to all the movies. And we um, were always involved in the arts as consumers and um my father was was an artist and he made sculptures from silver and and uh, kind of like jewelry sculptures which is really cool and my mom was also uh very creative you know also made jewelry and uh, was was a tailor and was a very creative person and I was really into music. So right away off the bat, I was singing before I was even speaking. And I was just really into the arts off the bat. And um, I began to draw when I was like five years old. And I was drawing like realism. I was drawing things that I would see and, and try to copy them and try to like the shadow and light and, and, and like replicate what I was able to see. And that was my way of just kind of like going within and, and kind of getting away from like the dysfunctional aspect of what was happening around me. You know, what, even though it was a loving uh, family full of creativity, it was also dysfunctional like a lot of us, our, our families can be uh, growing up. And, um, you know, I had to like witness or or hear some things that kids should not um at their at that age or at any age um i just it was difficult times in the beginning for the first like eight years and then we moved to new york when i was eight years old from turkey and uh you know, that had its own challenges because we came here with no money, with nothing, and uh, with no status. 
and built from scratch and as a family. So we stuck together and, um, you know, we kind of left my father behind uh, because of the trouble that he has gotten into and gotten us into. So it was uh, a very, uh, you know, sort of dramatic times and um, lots of growth happened during that time, a lot of like awareness and, and uh, trauma at the same time. So like that trauma needed to be healed. Um, and art was always there for me. <laughs> art was always like something I could turn to. I could always create. I could always take photos. I could always like be in the moment and capture a, a, a beautiful uh, thing that I see around me and, and be grateful for it. And um, or I can draw something and like escape this reality that's around me and go into like this metaphysical realm. And uh, I always knew I was an artist, so I, I, I grew up uh, wanting to pursue art. And, you know, like a lot of us, we were, I was told that, you know, you can't really make a living off of it or you're going to be a starving artist and this and that. Like, I've heard it all um, from friends and some family. Um, but most of the time, my family has been very supportive. Like, my immediate family has been very supportive. And, like, you know, um, they they know that. I'm meant to be an artist and I'm, I'm here for a reason and they support my uh, vision and mission. And, and that's a blessing, you know, that's a big blessing. So I'm very grateful for that. And, um, you know, I've, since I've been pursuing art all my life, I've done different, uh, things within the art world and in the, within different, uh, creative industries. Um, I've been a graphic designer, art director, uh, professional photographer, fashion photographer. Um, and, you know, I've, I've made, I've played music, classical music for like six years of my life. And I'm just open to like creating with everything and, and using all the tools and all the mediums to express myself and to also capture um, not only like what's going on around me, but to capture how I feel about what's going on around me and what, what I want to say about what's going on um, in, in this universe that we're living in, because it's far beyond uh, the realities that we're individually living in. Um, so I, it's, it's been a very spiritual process. Um, I've, I've done a lot of growing and, and expanding of my consciousness and like realizing who I really am, um, later on in life, uh, much more, um, and kind of like finding and healing myself and finding my peace, finding, um, the, the strength and the power to say, that I am uh, forgiving and I am um, just letting go of what is no longer serving me and only embracing things that are uh, positive and uh, loving and, uh, and, you know, with the intention of, of uh, being better, being a better human. Uh, not just a better artist or, uh, you know, uh, better at whatever I do in terms of skill set. Like that is something that I'm going to do regardless because I do what I love every day. Um, and as long as I do it every day, I'm going to get better at it. So I'm not worried about that. I'm more interested in like, how can I be a better person um, in every way, in every aspect of life, you know? Wow, well, no, that's beautiful, and uh, th thank you for for sharing, you know, about about your story. And I'm, you know, sorry about the traumas and things you had to face, you know, early on, you know, with the the dad and before, and, you know, and I'm sure coming to the to America, you know, I know it had its like you said its own challenges because um, I'm also was immigrated from 
came from Colombia, and I know when you know coming from another country and all that, it's and especially if you're if you don't have uh, a lot of means, it can be really difficult. But uh, but no, that's cool, and I love that you you know you had support from your family, you know, to really pursue art despite the fact that there was people say like naysayers and people saying that you know you wouldn't you know wouldn't be able to make a living and um love to hear that you know you've been going through this journey of like healing and and improving and all that and i was curious like when, when did that actually kind of you know happen for you like was there to kind of a more of a gradual you know process you think like over the years of you know, doing more of that introspection and healing and and, uh, and i was curious like yeah like so how that happened and how that's maybe kind of um, had any influences also on your art, you know, and the stuff that you're creating. Yeah, that's a great question. It's, it, it definitely is like a gradual um, and a series of sort of uh, awakenings that happen um, from experiences and um, heartbreaks and art like like just the process of living right like going through the emotions of mm -hmm. living and and being a human being and and uh learning how to love and learning how to love ourselves and learning how to receive love um it's it's been a very um interesting and like at times very painful uh, because it's like being very sensitive as, as like a, a highly sensitive artist, a highly sensitive person who, um, who like kind of self-diagnosed as ADHD because like just connected all the dots from all my past and it just all makes sense, uh, that, you know, I have a neurodivergence and it's the reason why um i am also who i am in in a very like creative and and um unique way and and that neurodivergence is like a good thing in my point of view because i know what it's like to live a life full of art and full of like love and and creativity and 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 all of these like flow state um, um, magic that I've been experiencing because of how my brain works, um, I wouldn't trade it for anything. You know, I, I wouldn't want to have, I, I wouldn't want to be someone else or have a different brain in any way. Um, and, you know, that kind of empowered me finding out rather than the opposite of like, hey, like I, I need to like fix myself, like, no, like I, I don't feel like I need to fix myself. I feel like I could, I could just be um, more myself and and like feed my strengths and focus on the things that I love that I'm good at. Um, and life is just really great that way. Like I don't need to conform to mm -hmm. uh, what is considered typical or neurotypical uh, in that in that you know in that sense, but. Um, yeah, I think that we all have very special gifts and, and like we're here for, um, a purpose and, and a reason, you know, to, to share that gift with, with others that provides value to their lives one way or another. And, um, I believe that my art is an expression of who I am and what's going on in my brain. and. Um, and what I can tap into, the energies I could like tap into using it, using that like antenna. Uh, I believe brains are like antennas and they pick up on information and, and energies and thoughts. Um, yeah. So that's, that's where I'm at with, with who I am. I believe that I'm an infinite being uh, and I'm able to chat, channel that infinite being. Yeah. And I, I, there was something that you kind of, some of the things you said, like just deeply, um, you know, hit me on a very, a very emotional level. Um, that whole piece about really accepting and loving who you are and the fact that, you know, you said, yeah, you're, you know, neuro neurodiverse and, you know, ADHD and all these things. And, and 
it's a lot of message, you know, that we get from people and society, right? That like, you know, you have to be a certain way or that these things are maybe viewed as negatives, right? As things that you need to correct or fix. But I love that you framed it as, you know, this is a big part of like who you are. And actually, in fact, it's actually a gift, right? It's actually a gift that's in, allowed you to be more creative, to maybe feel more, to, you know, to, to tap into mm-hmm. something bigger than yourself you know so that's 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 beautiful and i love that and um you know as a parent of someone that's uh you know neurodiverse as well you know it's it's um you know just yeah it, you know it's just making me you know think about my my daughter and like okay yeah you know it's, yeah, i i need to you know love all the things that maybe sometimes are really challenging but it's what helps make her special and i know that with those qualities and things she will you know show change the world you know? so yeah thank you for sharing that <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm glad you see it like that. That's it's so important to embrace uh humans as uh who they are. Definitely. Because uh, we're all gifted. We're all geniuses and and what we love. You just got to know find what we love and and nurture that thing that we love um doing and being and just keep being that cuz if we can continue being and 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 growing in the direction that um that we're meant to go in things align like magic happens like we meet people like you guys like we became friends and you know and we are growing communities together and you know it's like we're talking about these topics that that are important and 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 healing us uh, as a collective not just myself because like the artist's journey is first to like, you know, create and be in the process and, and find who you are and and realize who you are and, and heal yourself first. And then once you're able to heal yourself through your expression and, and, and truth, um, and then it's kind of, I believe it's my duty to, uh, to share that process, to share the knowledge and the, the wisdom that I gained from those experiences so that in the hopes of one other soul listening in, in that space, um, that they could, it could change their life for the better going forward, like realize that you got you know, uh, infinite potential in this life. And it's really up to all of us. Like, it's up to you what you want to do with that potential today um, and every day. Like, it's a decision we got to make. Like, are we going to make that decision to uh, to be and create and to love? Or are we going to make the decision to fear, to not be, and to um, to not do? You know, to be fearful of doing and being, um, which is going to get us nowhere. So, you know, if you're not moving forward, you're moving backwards because time is ticking. You know, um, time is another topic that we're going to discuss today. So that's also really abstract. Um, yeah. Um, I have a question for you. Uh, for those who are listening either on the stream or in the space who are not familiar with what flow state is and how it connects to your intuitive style of creating, could you explain it and explain how you're able to create within this state of being? Yeah. So flow state is um, the act of fully being immersed in the moment and with the task at hand or whatever you're doing in that moment is um, fully being immersed into that moment with a certain level of skill that matches and um, it matches that that skill that you're doing. It, it, ma- it really matches the level of which you're doing it at and it's actually a little bit challenging 
So the more challenging it is, or like if, if it's kind of like unsure and you're just in the moment and you don't know, you, there, there's a an element of I don't know what's going to happen next or I don't know exactly how I'm going to do this. That puts me in a flow state of like full immersion. And when I'm in that state, I am performing at my best. I'm performing at my potential. And I am tapped in to um, a higher frequency and uh, a consciousness that I'm able to like channel um, almost effortless flow like water movements. And those movements create um, my paintings or whatever I'm doing. It could be like skateboarding or surfing or uh, or just being uh, present with my friends and family. Like I could be in a flow state um, at any time. And it's just, it's a meditation. That's what flow state is. It's active meditation. Cool. I love that. Um, on Instagram, you have many reels that showcase how quickly you're actually able to create a piece of art. And I was hoping since we're on the live stream, maybe you could show us. And yeah. for anybody who's um, listening in the space, if you want to check this out, go to Giancarlo's uh, page and you'll see it as one of the tweets and you can watch. Well, I have this set up. So I'll just uh, get started real quick. Sometimes finding a brush that's not dried out is a challenge because I forget to wash my brushes. Um, but, you know, I'm never going to waste them. Like, they're, they're dry, but they're kind of like pieces of art for me. So I'm going to, like, make a sculpture at some point. Um, yeah. I got this big brush here. You know what? Who needs brushes, right? We got, I have my hands, my favorite brushes. People are just joining <laughs> just in case you're in like silence. Um, Sarkis is, is drawing something right now with his hands, and yeah, very quickly and, and beautiful piece. And so, if you go to my um, my Twitter page, you can see there in the on the live stream what he's making. And I just uh, took a quick snapshot oh, cool, with cool. my and posted it to the top cool. so folks can awesome. Uh, I don't see it on the space for some reason posted. Or did you do it as a comment, Jenny, or as a... I did. Uh, maybe it's taking it a second. Oh, maybe it's I taking a second. It. Yeah. There it is. Cool. And just like that, like an entire yeah. <laughs> piece. <laughs>
So dope. <laughs> Amazing. Bravo. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that felt really good. Thank you for giving me the space to do that. Kind of needed that and didn't know I needed that. Our pleasure, man. Our pleasure. No, it's it's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I love it too. Gotta be one of my favorites. Uh, one of my favorites, latest favorites. Yeah. How long was that? Was that like I didn't, three, four minutes? I didn't like start a timer or anything. I don't know, Jenny, do you know? Maybe three minutes. Maybe. Yeah, probably like three, four minutes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's so dope. So I know, um, you know, you, you've done work on, on a lot of different, you know, mediums and stuff like that. I wonder, do you, do you have any, a particular medium that's your favorite to work in? Um, that's a good question. I, I really like all mediums, but um, I like acrylic a lot because it's like, it's very easy to work with. It dries very quickly. I move very quickly. Mm-hmm. So I do love acrylic for that, but I also really love oil and I love like watercolor and charcoal and I really love it all. Um, I really can't pick a favorite because then it like kind of limits me mm-hmm. to, to that. Um, I really like Posca markers, like these bad boys. These are like some of my favorites to walk around with because um, I could draw anywhere with it and like I create like a brush like tip with it and um i can just create on the go anywhere i want with it so this is one of my favorite tools actually cool no oh, thanks for sharing that and yeah and I, and I think it makes sense yeah like you're saying like you know just not limiting yourself to one thing but being willing to kind of explore and try out different you know different different mediums and yeah that's that's cool yeah i think just like adopting that like and mentality instead of or mentality mm-hmm. like it has really uh taken my art to the next level too because like i I love mixed media i love mixing medias on a canvas and when when i do that there's like it's it's more dimensional that way because there's more textures more variance in like the the quality of the the materials um so i don't know that creates something that's even more interesting and 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 uh deep in my point of view that's awesome now you're a painter and a digital artist but you're also a phenomenal photographer how did you get into photography Photography was something that I had since I was a child as well. Um, I actually was using these um, the disposable cameras, the, those film disposable cameras, when I was like eight, nine, ten years old, and I would just take pictures of everything, like random things I would see on the floor. I would find like beauty and and literally like the most mundane things to you know to the average person like looking around they would not care to photograph um and my mom actually i remember one time like i was i think eight or nine years old and i was on like a class trip and she came uh as like a chaperone or something and she was like the cool chaperone that like let us play and do things that normally we weren't allowed to do but um (laughs) and she got in trouble for it and everything so uh, you know i love my mom for that like you know she's always like the cool parent um and at the time i was taking photographs during this trip with my disposable camera and she's like why are you taking photos of garbage on the floor when you can be like photographing all these new monuments that you're seeing and 
all these new things that you're seeing, like, why are you choosing to photograph those things? I'm like, it's okay, mom, you don't understand. I'm going to be a famous artist and photographer one day and, and you'll know what it means then. And I laugh about it now because like I was eight years old or nine years old when I said that. So it is funny, but it is sort of true too. Cause like I never stopped photographing and I still photograph random things that, and make them look beautiful. Um, but you know, as I got older, I started photographing everything and people and capturing beautiful moments, fleeting moments, uh, that, you know, you'll never experience or see again. And to capture the essence of a person's beauty, it became like a passion for me. Um, you know, when, once I fell in love as a teenager, I was like, wow, you like, you know, my girlfriend was so beautiful. So I wanted to take photos of her and she was taking photos of me. And, um, it was just like a love language, right? Like, capturing each other's essence and and laughter and moments and um it just stuck with me and i kept you know photographing beauty after that and and um uh, i got into fashion just like by happenstance like meeting the right people being in the right places them seeing like uh me in the moment like capturing something and like asking me like, what are you shooting? And then I'll show them and they're like, whoa, like, how'd you get that from that? Like, how did you right. see that? And, and like, they'll see me take a photo of something and then I'll show them the photo I took and they're like, what the fuck? Like, how did you do that? So that, that got me a lot of like attention and a lot of people asking me like, oh, can you photograph me? Like, I saw you, your photos of this person. Uh, you know, I would love to hire you for uh, headshots or portraits or whatever. So I, I started getting offers. Like I wasn't even like looking for jobs or looking for work. People started offering me money. Like, you know, I, I, I need a great photographer and I love your work. And they would just keep coming and keep coming back. And they would wait <laughs> for me like for months and like not shoot with someone else. Wow. And I was like, whoa, like there's something here like people really love what I'm doing here and and it's making them feel good about themselves so that actually really um clicked for me that that photography and especially photographing people was way deeper than capturing their physical beauty and even when I like shoot with all these like beautiful models and like objectively yes they're very beautiful but they're also beautiful human beings and like like it's deeper than than skin so like if you could tap into like that human being soul and you could like connect with them and you can create like a moment that you could capture moments from rather than creating a stage and like trying to pose a mannequin which is not the way I approach photography or, or, or fashion photography at all. Like I'm just, I want the, the model or the subject to be themselves and to be um, really present with me. And when they're really present with me and they're having a good time and we're having a moment, those, those moments that I can capture on camera express the feelings and the and, and and that the essence of that person in that moment so it's deeper than just their their visual beauty and it captures their soul and that's why people love it that's why they love it so much and and, and a lot of times they you know most times they made the photos that i took even the professionals made the photos that I took their like profile photos and it would stay their profile photos for a long time. And I would see like on their phones, they would, they would have like a photo that I took as their background. And that made me feel really good. I was like, you know, this is really awesome. Like people are really appreciating what I create and um, it just gives me more fuel uh, to, to share what I do. I'm going to do it regardless, but to share that experience with other people and to, 
to keep like putting it out there, I think is, um, yeah, it, it, it not only heals people, but like helps people see the beauty, uh, in, in, in things and in people and, in, in, in uh, moments that, um, you know, maybe I feel like, you know, beauty, beauty and nature and the universe and God and all these things are, are intertwined and as one thing and it's all one thing and, and beauty is divine. So it's not like a superficial thing for me. Like beauty for me is very like, it's deep, it's divine. It's, it's, um, it's in everything. Like, it's not just in things that are deemed beautiful, but every human being is beautiful in some way. And they just, they need to express themselves to find that beauty in, in, within themselves and, and like, and, and share it with the world, right? Like they, they really need to love themselves and that's true beauty like for me is like love is is the true beauty like when you know that you have that like acceptance and love for yourself i think you see beauty in in everything and everyone and you also are beautiful regardless of what some people may say or think or whatever like you are beautiful regardless of of anything because you are in this like uh, divine state of love and there's nothing more beautiful than that you know I love that response and I agree so much and I love that you're like the catalyst for others to discover that and that then whatever it is that they're participating in like you said the models it winds up being an expression of that beauty because they feel so comfortable to just be themselves so I love that. It's very empowering and very cool. Mm -hmm. I love that. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah. I did pin uh, two of your uh, photos to this space on Twitter. Um, and I just think they're beautiful. One's a nature one. Just the colors are lovely, the balance. And then um, also one other one is uh, one of the models. And like her body is in a movement that like to me is just so free flowing it's like the strokes of the paint and that's also like on her body she's gorgeous thank you yeah she's uh Le Letitia she's a, a very talented um dancer performer uh she's a ballerina and acrobat she does like Cirque du Soleil um performances and stuff so she's She's a uh, very professional and um, she understood the assignment very well. And it was like, it was a beautiful um, collaboration that we did. And I painted first on a canvas as the background. You know, I did a few strokes on the canvas as the background. And then uh, I painted on top of her body um, and she just created these shapes kind of flowed the same way, like you said, with, uh, with, um, brush strokes themselves. And she became the painting, like it merged as one thing. So yeah, I love that piece as well. Thank you. You have Sorry. two collections. <laughs> you have two collections currently, your original Genesis collection on foundation and another one on manifold. And both of them share the theme of the travelers. Can you share with us who the travelers are and what message you are hoping to express through these collections? Sure, yeah. Uh, so the travelers is a collection that I've actually been working on for a very long time, uh, probably like four or five years or more. Um, I, I've been drawing uh, from a flow state um, Kind of channeling these beings and uh without using reference like I, they would just come to me and the time traveler is is a character that is usually wearing a hat with a third eye 
a hat similar to the one I'm wearing. So it's kind of like a representation of uh, self um, and consciousness and um, the, these con- these uh, beings of light. So the travelers are uh, beings of light who uh, are timeless beings and there is no time and space. They, they are um, one. They are one with um, the entire universe. So they're expressions of the universe. And um, they're here to spread love and they're here to spread uh, awareness and, um, um, and healing uh, and empowerment. So it's all about empowerment, oneness consciousness and um universal expressionism is what i call it is it the expression of the universe and i'm a vessel um for that expression so you know i'm grateful to be a vessel uh for the universe to work through me and the, all of these uh digital paintings uh these this is the digital uh genesis collection the one you see um in the screen right now uh, is the Genesis Digital Collection, and I created these on Procreate without reference, without a plan, uh, in a flow state, just you know, not knowing where it's going to go, and that's the best part for me. And uh, created these uh, travelers, and there's only, uh, I believe, fourteen travelers. Um, Jennifer owns two of them. So, um, yeah, she's, she's the queen of the travelers at the moment. And she has the only, um, female one, which is a collaboration with, uh, three minutes. Um, really love that collaboration. Um, and yeah, the travelers and the time travelers is, um, is the the character that I'm going to be moving forward with with um, the new manifold contract and the I've done a couple of uh, editions that sold out um, and those editions are going to be very limited even though they were open editions they were limited to only 24 hours and uh, the cap would be um, whatever whoever minted within those 24 hours gets and 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 there's no more created um no no more additions created so and they're kind of rare because uh, i'm only doing a few additions i'm not going to do like a hundred or a thousand of them um but i am also going to be doing um more one of one uh, time travelers in black and white and in color uh, so I'm actually going to be dropping um, a, a color traveler, and it's a time traveler in the Genesis collection next Tuesday, and we're going to have a spatial party um, where, like, there's going to be a, a, a time lapse of me creating the piece on the three on the theater that Jennifer made for the travelers and. Um, it's also going to be the, the the drop date for that piece. Um, and it's going to be revealed during the space. So um, if, if you can make it next Tuesday, 7 to, I would say, 9, 10 p.m., um, we'll, be, we'll be here on, uh, in, on Twitter and also Spatial uh, sharing that, that piece on the Genesis collection. And then um, I'm contemplating using Manifold going forward for the Time Travelers collection, the black and white collection. Um, But I'm not 100% sure if I want to continue using Manifold for that due to some experiences that I've had. Um, So... I might move over to known origin. I'm not really sure yet. Um, I'm going to decide that in the coming weeks. But yeah, that's the time traveler and the travel. Yeah. 
So, Sarkis, is, is there, and I know you mentioned a, you know, a couple ones that um, are a bit special, but I don't know, is there a particular traveler that maybe is your, you consider like your favorite or that you're, you're particularly fond of uh, out of the four teams? Yeah, uh, there's a couple of them that I am like, I could call my favorites. Um, and you can probably walk around the spatial um, and find it. Um, so if you go turn around to the other side, turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around, keep going there. Go back. Go back. No, no, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes yes right there so you see that piece with uh multiple time travelers a dolphin um you know more eyes and more creatures in the back and um just lots of life in that one it's that one's really deep so that one is uh, one of my favorites and it's also the most premium one. It's the most expensive one in the collection because it is my favorite. And it has the time travelers in it, multiple. Uh, and the dolphin, which is uh, one, one of my favorite uh, creations, animals. Um, so that's a special one. And uh, the other one is the alien. I really love the alien with the third eye. Um, I channeled that alien one day and as i was drawing that alien i got a phone call from a friend um and she started talking to me about her alien encounter and i was like whoa um i am just drawing an alien right now as you're talking to me about this so yeah it was very interesting uh to have that moment there's also a fish on the right to that um yeah and there's other there's other things going on in the background um that's like the fabric of the universe the backgrounds this is the fabric of the universe um time and space is being warped and um yeah they're all the travelers are all traveling through time and space which is a very abstract uh, multi-dimensional thing it's actually not linear as we see it or experience it cool no thank you for sharing that it's funny that first piece you mentioned was one that i was like particularly drawn to when i just kind of was scanning your collection before um you know prepping for the interview and that's the one I picked for like the, the little like flyer thing, just out of <laughs> pure pure coincidence too, which is interesting. But uh, no, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, thank you. I noticed you chose that for yeah, the background I didn't, I didn't too. Even ask you. Yeah. I just, it was just the one I was like that one. <laughs> I just I just went for it. Yeah, I love that one. That one, um, you know, that whole collection actually took me a couple of months because I had to get used to like using Procreate mm -hmm. too. Um, and I'll, and I was just using tons of layers. Um, and I wanted to really like go deep into like the tiniest details. Uh, so it's, it's very expressive and it's very free flowing, but it's also very highly balanced. All the pieces are very balanced. And like, if you zoom into any square inch of it, it's a complete painting. Um, it, it's like, I don't know, like, you really need to look at look at them at, at, a, at a big scale or zoom into them and take your time with them because there's a lot of energy in them um, and there's a lot of like very potent energy in in the art that I create because I'm so um, immersed in it and I'm so focused like my entire being is focused on the painting. I'm not thinking about anything else. Like the, nothing else exists, and all my energy is being channeled into my creations. So um, that energy is where the where the value lies. Um, now you're a fine artist, and you've exhibited several times at in-person events. As a traditional artist. 
who embrace technologies like your spatial, which is phenomenal, uh, social media, obviously, <laughs> and blockchain technology, what advice would you give other fine artists who are interested in embracing technology? I like that question. I think as an artist um, and as any creative or professional, like keeping up with the current tools that we have and the current mediums that we have and being um, in tune with like what is happening now in the world around us uh, is kind of like an important part of being an artist and like capturing the times and, and expressing ourselves with what we had during those times because it's unique to those times. And, and when you go back in time, a hundred years from now, people are going to look back and they are going to look at people who created digital art and got into Web3 space and NFTs. And that's going to be like a, a chapter or a book in, in, in the art textbooks at some point. So, and it's going to be studied. It's going to be, um, it's going to be a cultural phenomenon to be studied. Um, and it's going to transform culture, whether we like it or not. So it's like, it's not really about how you feel about something that's going to affect the world around you. It's, it's about like the cold hard facts that there are thousands or millions of people who are going to use it, who are going to benefit from it, who are going to use the tools that they have available for their benefit. And if you're not using it, I believe that you're kind of leaving something on the table. Table, and uh, it, it could be, it could be something that you like, and you don't know you'll like it until you try it. And if you don't like it, it's okay to stop using it. So it's not like nobody's holding you hostage to use any technology or any tool. It's really your choice and it's available. So why not experiment with it and see what you can do and what you can learn from it and who you can meet through it ultimately? Because I think that the best thing that came from my experience of being in the Web3 space are the connections that I made through it, are the people that I became friends with through it. And then we, you know, we're having these conversations because of, of that. Um, and there's so much value there that has nothing to do with the technology. Like it has nothing to do with NFTs. It has nothing to do with any of the financial aspect of it. Uh, it's just, it's more than one thing. It's, it's, it's multidimensional. And, uh, I would say, give it a chance. If you don't like it, you could always stop using it. I love that answer. Um, yeah, I agree. I feel like it's a it's it's easy to fall on. Well, I only do this, and I only create in this way. But um, you know, if you give it a shot, you might like it. And like you said, I think the real value here is the ability to connect with so many people, which any artist benefits from. Because at the end of the day, like an artist wants their art to be seen. That's you know, and connect. So I agree, and I think that's great right. advice for anybody who. Uh, is on the fence or thinking about it and maybe listening to this interview today. Um, I have a question about artists in general. Like, do you have favorite artists in or outside Web3 or maybe both? Um, that's a hard question to answer because I just love art and artists so much. And every artist is so unique. Um, and incomparable to other artists. Uh, but I, what, what I resonate with more um, is like the traditional painting, uh, the textures and like the expressions. Um, you know, I love digital art and I love like animations and procreate and all that stuff too. But I'm more like I I'm more in tune with 
like people like um Willinda Kooning or or um you know I, I really love for example um from living artists and, and, and one of my friends uh Zoe uh Zoe Rose Schwartz like her work I collect her work as well um I think her work is is just brilliant and beautiful and unique um she's a painter she also makes some uh digital art as well but um she's just a, a an amazing like expressive figurative painter um i resonate with her work i resonate with um you know our friends that are in in, in our space that i collect uh you know every person that i collect from i love their work um you know uh it's hard to just say one name for me because it's hard to pick a favorite when I love everyone. Um, and, uh, yeah, like I really appreciate what everyone creates so much because it's, it's also necessary. Like it all has so much value. Like I don't, I don't hold one above the other so much. Um, I just hold the value of like, let's create and let's keep creating and never stop creating and let's co-create and let's have a good time. It's really not that serious. Um, you know, there's a lot of, um, pretension in art sometimes. And it's like, Oh, you know, this sucks. This is good. This is bad. This is whatever. Like, and, and yeah, like I may not resonate with a lot of art. Like I may not like a lot of, art like it may not resonate with me but i know that it's going to resonate with other people so it doesn't mean it's bad art it just means that it's something that's not for me and it's for others and my art could be for for certain people and maybe not for others and that's okay too because it, it there is that like frequency of resonance like do you resonate with the frequency in which I'm creating in, which is love and, and universal energy or not. It's, it's pretty clear. Um, and it's, there's no, it's not personal either. So that's something to remember as an artist, like don't ever take, um, anything personally. Like when someone says, Oh, that's what you made or, or like makes like a negative comment on what you create, like, that could be really disheartening for sensitive artists because we are sensitive. Um, and I don't want anyone to be like, oh, like people don't like my work, so I'm just going to stop making it. That's the wrong approach. Like you're making your art because it feels good and you love and you're a creator and you love creating. Um, and there are going to be people who love it and there are going to be people who resonate with it and you are going to get better at it too. So you have to keep going. Um, yeah, that's just, I guess I went in a tangent. I answered your question, but like, no, that's great. I wanted to expand on like why I don't want to give you a clear answer on who my favorite artists are. No, it makes perfect sense actually. Yeah, I love the answer and and the tangent as well because I think the tangent you went in is is an important message for a lot of people to hear, right? Because I think it's it's easy when you are emotional and when we have a tendency to want to take things personally. Um, to you know, for example, your art doesn't sell, or maybe you don't get as many likes on something that you feel like, well, maybe I'm just not good enough. Or people just don't like what I create, you know, but I think it's, it's an important message you said that like, you know, maybe it's just, you know, certain, you know, and, 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 and also the frequencies and the, and the stuff that you create, I mean, it could be different and it can resonate and, you know, vibe with different people. Right. And, and it's, and it's important. You said just, you know, keep creating because you love to create and putting it out there in the world. And maybe just the, the right person hasn't seen that particular piece yet. You know, I just, I just, you just haven't, you know, haven't connected with the right person, for that particular type of work or art you created. But so I love, I love that message you said about, um, 
you know, by just continuing to create, to put that out there. And obviously with continuing to practice, we can imp- continue to improve our skills and get better at, at, at whatever we do. Right. So I, I love that. And, um, and even your answer about like the favorite artists, right. And, and that like, you know, not trying to put one above, above the other, because at the end of the day, like art is very subjective as well. Right. And, and, um, and it all, it all has its own beauty in its own way. Right. So, so I love that, you know, that saying that, you know, yeah, it's, you can find beauty and appreciation in, in, in so many different types of art, you know, and it's, and it's very different. It's not something just easily quantifiable, right. As well. So I think that's, that's a beautiful yeah. answer. Yeah. I also want to add that it, like, if I had to pick a favorite artist mm-hmm. that's not alive, <laughs> so no one <laughs> feels a certain yeah. way is uh is salvador dali Mm. and i had the opportunity uh thanks to jennifer when i visited tampa she um she got me a great gift and and you know uh i got to go to the museum uh, the dali museum and i got to see like his paintings and drawings in person and it was just, I don't know, it was like a revelation because I've always loved his work. I've always, I've seen some of his drawings in the past, but I hadn't seen most of his paintings in person and seeing them in person is always a different experience. Um, and it was, it was just incredible. And I really resonate with, with his art. Like I really resonate with his brain. And how he thinks, and like the, um, the surreal, and 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 like the hidden messages and faces and all these things, his expressions and how he drew. Um, yeah, I really resonate with Dolly. Just want to say that. Yeah, I'm also a huge fan of his work. Um, and funny enough, I've seen his work live outside of the U.S., but I've never actually been to the. Um, to the museum in Tampa. So that's still on my list of, of things I need to, uh, need to go do. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, also, also a big fan of, of his work. And, um, and speaking about, you know, just your work and projects and things like that, I was curious, um, if you could tell us a little bit more about any upcoming projects or goals that you have for your, our career, and maybe what we can expect to see from you in the future, um, outside of the, you know, the spatial thing that you were, you're planning, uh, that's coming up next, but any other, any other interesting projects, goals, or things you want to share? Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to share too much because um, I, I kind of manifest things as I go. And um, I don't really plan much um, for the future. I just kind of have, I have visions and uh, I have manifestations. And um don't really want to talk about it too much before they come true. Um, and, but I do want to share that I will be, um, that I will be exhibiting more, uh, near the end of the year, uh, in physical, um, like events, IRL events and more, I will be doing more like live painting um, online and in person. So that's something exciting to look forward to. I, I've been live painting in the past uh, for a few years now. Um, uh, I started live painting on Instagram Live in 2020 uh, during the pandemic. I was going to be doing some like in person uh live painting sessions and everything was canceled and you know i couldn't do that so i was like uh, let's just pivot use the tools that we have and i started just like streaming every day i started streaming live every day what i was creating what i was painting and um i started to connect with other artists that way and and paint together um i you know i had i made some really great friends and connections that way and uh kind of want to really bring that back i want to bring that energy back 
in those live sessions because you know just like how you guys saw today like yeah yeah you know it's it's a it's a special connection that i'm able to make uh in my process with people because the process really shows um how energetically and quickly and and in in free form i create these things like i'm not here sketching out what I'm about to create and uh, not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just, that's not my um, process. So what I, I just go, I just go, I don't really measure anything. I don't, I don't think about where something's going to go. I just let my hands take care of all the work and uh, I observe as I do it. Let me ask you so, a question actually well, um, about the piece you made, right? So, cause I'm intrigued by this, like as you're drawing it, did the vision of the whole thing pop into your mind and then you completed it or no, you're just, you know, just, you know, creating stuff and it's just forming itself bef before you. Yeah. Pretty much. Pretty much. It's just happening. I am, in real time. I am witnessing <laughs> it. I am witnessing it in real time coming to life just as much as everyone else is. Um, that's why it's so exciting and special. Um, even when I, I draw, the time travelers, um, each time traveler is different. Each time traveler is unique. It's not like the other time traveler. Uh, it, there are similarities, yes, for sure. Uh, but every stroke, every one is very unique. Um, and there's, I guess there's a method to the madness, but <laughs> the... <laughs> That method, that method is up for variance at any time, every time, um, and it's always an experiment. So, like, I can I can do something differently every single time that I draw, uh, slightly differently, and I can learn something from that. So, it's kind of like life. I treat mm -hmm. my artistic process as same as life. Um, Got to do things. And you got to repeat and you got to have reps and repetition, but you got to also do things a little differently every time just to exp that like slight tweak and experimentation can go a long way in, in, in increments over time. Like it could exponentially um, help us grow and expand. Love that. You live by a mantra, a way of life that you've shared on your Tuesday spaces, which you refer to as art is love. Can you explain how art is love and how this mindset and way of life can have a therapeutic and positive impact on our lives? And maybe um, just a follow-up question like, and how have you benefited from, uh, from it personally? I love that question. Art is love. Um, as much as art is life. And life is art. And life is also love. So love is a frequency. And that frequency connects us all together as one. universe right universe that the word says uni means one and verse is a word for song so you can see the word universe as one song or a symphony right so like we have to work harmoniously within the universe within the universe with on, whether that's on earth outside of earth doesn't matter right like within this universe the law of the universe says love is oneness and oneness requires harmony and balance so love is working as one as a unit or being one with everything and art is when I'm in 
that place of creation, I am one with everything. Therefore, I am love and I am in love in this frequency of love. And that's the energy that I'm channeling and I'm putting it onto paper, canvas, digital, photo, whatever. Everything that I touch becomes art because I'm, I am in that frequency that connects me to everything as, as this one entity. And, uh, and one consciousness, shared infinite consciousness. That's what the time traveler represents, is love represents that shared consciousness, collective uh, consciousness that, um, that we're not separate. We're not separate beings. We appear to be separate beings in this 3D world. Um, and, you know, I think that causes a lot of uh, trouble. In, in our world to to continue seeing separation uh whether that's separation on borders or separation between people um i don't think that i think that we're all one race you know the human race as humans we're all one race and even beyond that we are st- we are one with everything else outside of humans too we're one with the animals, we're one with the coral reefs, we're one with the ocean, we're one with earth, we're one with the stars. We're made with the same matter that the stars are made out of. And and we think that we're separate from it. And I think the therapeutic and the healing aspect of that is you are not alone. You're not separate. You are loved. You are love. And you will forever be love. Um, and nothing can take that away from you. And um, just don't give in to fear. Because fear is the, the antidote to love. Um, and it's the thing <clears throat> that holds um, most of us back from being ourselves. And uh, from, you know, reaching our full potential. and, and and, and being fully ourselves and loving ourselves. If, if we are able to not judge ourselves and not judge our, the others um, and be um, come from this place, this frequency of love, where we're aware of what we do and what we say has an impact outside of ourselves. And it affects that effect has a butterfly effect that goes on forever. Uh, I think we'll be very um, mindful and intentional on how we behave and how we speak and and the things that we put out in the world and the energy that we uh, exude. Because the energy that you exude is the energy you will attract. And uh, the more you are love, the more you exude love, the more you will attract love and, and, and receive it. Um, that's just my experience. These are not uh, theories. These are uh, my experiences. And I'm just sharing my point of view from my experience. No, that was beautifully sad. I mean, like, my drop on that one. <laughs> yeah. I'm definitely oh, going to clip that. <laughs> Just I know. that. I'm like, yeah, no, it's beautiful. That's wonderful. And deep. Yeah. Love that. Thank you. I was, I was actually like almost visualizing some kind of like art piece or something, you know, like the art, love, life, you know, <laughs> all of them just, you know, I don't know. I had these like visions in my mind, you know, when you were talking about it, but yeah, just such a beautiful, um, yeah, no, just, just love that so much. Yeah. Yeah, as you were saying it, I actually thought of the alien piece in a totally different way now. I mean, I love the alien piece, but then I'm like, oh, so maybe the aliens, like, he he time traveled and then we're all connected. And so, like, in my head, I'm like, well, why why the fish and the alien? But it makes so much sense now because of how you just expressed it. Because we are fish, we are all things. So why wouldn't an alien why would an alien come to us necessarily like 
as humans, it's just human condition that we would think that an alien would come to another human being because we're like the apex of um, of life on this planet. But no, you know, so we think. Yeah, so we think. <laughs> it's like as 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 alien as it could be, right, on our own planet, and it just makes so much sense that uh, these two creatures would would align with each other. So. Thank you for that answer. Very inspirational, very beautiful. Thank you. So and, we have- uh, I like the connection you made uh, with the fish in the ocean and the aliens. I, I do believe that um, if there were, quote unquote, aliens, um, you know, because aliens is a word like uh, they're not from here, you know, like it just means not from here, foreign. Um, I, I think humans are not from here. <laughs> If you look at the the data, I mean, I mean, look look at obviously you have like you know like the octopus and like all these creatures, the cuttlefish, and mm-hmm. like yeah, they must be aliens, right? And they must not be from Earth. But why is why are humans the only creatures on Earth actually destroying the planet? So that makes me think, right? Like, are humans are humans not of Earth? Are humans not from here? Some humans. Are we mixed? Are we inbred? Like, like, what is? What? <laughs> Very humans certainly behave like they don't appreciate this world. That's for sure. Yeah, and and within nature, there's harmony, right? Like, there's balance, and I think the humans are throwing off that balance. Not every human, but like, you know, as as a civilization. It's been going in that direction for a long time. And I want to like bring more awareness to how connected we are to this planet and, and nature and make a point because, you know, we, we have to, we have to start seeing it that way and start seeing that we're part of it, not separate from it or above it because we're totally not above nature. Like if, if we, if, if there had to be a contest between nature and us, we will lose. Uh, so we have to be very mindful of of that um, that power. Like y- you can believe in whatever you want, um, whatever whatever religion or God that you believe in, but we're living in it. We're living on it. We're we're part of it, and if we don't have respect for it then who's the alien? <laughs> Are we the alien who's the or alien? <laughs> who's the alien? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> oh, man. So um, one of the things I wanted to ask you, Sarkis, and maybe you already touched a little bit on this as well, but um, what are you passionate about outside of art and in Web3? Mm, that's a great question. I have a lot of different uh, areas of interest and passion. Uh, my main passion being uh, life. I'm passionate about life and everything that life has to offer. Um, art, life is art to me. Like that's my uh, ultimate masterpiece. Is my art, is my life, and every and my story and everything that I do. Um, and I, I really love cooking. I really love uh, skateboarding. I really love um, being in nature, like swimming in the ocean, surfing, hiking. Um, I'm really passionate about uh, connecting with other like-minded people. Um, I'm, I'm passionate about building community i'm passionate about love i'm passionate about uh the present moment <laughs> i'm passionate about like literally like drinking water i'm passionate about everything um it's 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 just a state of being like i'm just passionate i love it yeah and i think that first answer really encapsulates it like passionate about life you know just experiences yeah. and, and all of it that's it's awesome and I was just checking now if anybody does want to come up and request to speak, feel free to do so. We'd love to have you guys join us. 
let us know how you're doing. If you want to come up and ask Sarkis a question. Um, I also saw that David was in the in the audience. I'm sure maybe he was getting a kick out of uh, out of the alien conversation as well. So if you want to you want to give us some of your thoughts on on aliens, uh, feel free to come up, Dave. I would appreciate that. And uh, while we wait for other speakers, you know, one of the questions we usually ask people, um, on, you know, here and I always find it interesting to see people's uh, answer to this is, you know, what are the what are your like top three favorite movies of all time? Top three favorite movies of all time. Damn, asking me another favorite question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so bad at choosing favorites of things. Um, damn. This is so hard. Even though I, I saw this question before, I'll, I'll admit, like, I've gotten the question in advance, but I still, I still don't know the answer to it. Um, I can't recall. Like, I don't know. I really love films, and they're also different. I like movies that are um, more real, um, like something that could be real life. Yeah, so the question was, do I have three favorite movies? And just like my artist question, I don't have three favorite movies. Um, I love, I love like documentary films, and I love movies. Uh, I've been watching movies since I was a baby, uh, so I can't really pick one or three. But I would recommend a couple uh, to check out that come to mind. Um, I'd say check out Samsara. I think I mentioned it before in previous space. Samsara is a very interesting film. It's silent. There are no words. Um, but it's a masterpiece of uh, visually and, and culturally and everything that it like shows. It's a, it's a mind fuck. Like it's, it blows your mind. Um, and um, what else? Like I like movies like. Um, like Avatar as well, because like they really use technology uh, to to like express something um, that has meaning too. Like what I was saying earlier, like are are humans the aliens, or you know, because the humans in those movies are also the ones destroying the, the you know the nature and these these beautiful creatures and all that. So there's a story behind that as well. Um, uh yeah just i don't know movies i love movies i don't i can't pick one or two yeah and no, I, I can kind of feel you on that as well because i mean uh you're uh, muted uh, am i muted uh oh i was muted in the sp- i got confused i was muted in the in the space and not the uh <laughs> not my my other thing over here um yeah no i can relate to, uh, on that as well because it's it can be hard to pick like a favorite and especially because there's so many different genres and things like that, right? So it's it's like you know how do yeah. you choose across those. But I haven't seen uh, yeah. Samsara, so I'm gonna I'm gonna check that out. Actually, now I'm I'm very intrigued to to watch yeah. that one. So I'm putting that on the list. <laughs> um, yeah. And I know we got uh, several speakers. I think I captured the right order, but I lost track there for a second. <laughs> but I think uh, I think I saw Luco come up first, and oh, I see Anna so has her hand up. Uh, Anna, talk. Um, I'm okay. Hey, Anna. <laughs> oh my God, that's so funny. So gentlemen of you, Luca. Thank you so much. Well, first of all, thank you uh, for the wonderful uh, space. Uh, last week and uh, this week, Sarkis, it was absolutely a pleasure to hear you speak uh, because um, uh, I was just in your seat last week. So. I actually have two questions that I I had kind of like not burning in me while I was listening to it. And funny enough, at TGIF, I went to the pool, I was in the water while I was chilling and listening to you speak. So it was just like a com- complete Nirvana moment for me. So number one question is, how do you stay so chill all the time? Does anything ever aggravate you? I mean, 
Hello, you're from New York. I know. So uh, that's number one. Are, and the uh, second question is, how are you related? Uh, no, hold on. Let me rephrase this. Are you related in any way? Are you connected with uh, your own culture in any way? I know you said in the beginning of the space that you were that you were uh, born in Turkey, but um, I don't remember if you said you were Turkish. I don't think you were. I don't think you said that, but are you somehow anyway connected to your culture? I mean, are there any specific things that you enjoy doing um, speaking from the immigrant life? So I'm just saying. So both questions are deeply related to my personal state of being. Uh, I try to stay calm as much as I possibly can, even though uh, I have not been diagnosed with anything. But sometimes, like, uh, I don't have the patience for the stupid. I, I'm just saying, this is just, like, me and life in general. But <laughs> my best and best and calmest moment is when obviously creating art. So, anyways, uh, go ahead, answer that. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Anna, for <laughs> your energy and uh, your questions. Really loved it. Um, I think what keeps me chill. Uh, I'm not. I'm not always a hundred percent chill all the time, but I am chill most of the time. Um, it's a practice. Um, it just, you know, practicing patience, practicing, like, you know, love and empathy and um i just don't take things personally that's another thing that like i had to learn over time uh not taking things personally and it's like it's pretty easy when you don't take anything personally uh not to get mad at a lot of things um also like you said you don't have patience for stupid that's uh that's funny it's i also don't really have too much patience for stupid but um i don't know I, it's like stupid the a weird word right like i don't really want to call people stupid but at the same time like it could be annoying sometimes to you know speak or, or deal with certain people who may not see the same way you do or or understand life the same way you do and um i don't really i don't like labeling them a certain way i just say oh we're not compatible our energies are not compatible and i remove myself from that uh, environment or situation or person um i just kind of curate my life so that it's not surrounded by people who aggravate me uh and if it's the people who I love that are the challenge, which could be uh, a lot of times challenging, you know, you can't really run from that. You can't, you know, um, you're not supposed to run from that. The whole point of that is to learn uh, to be patient. It's all a big lesson um, and it's all a big blessing. So it's all, it's all lessons and blessings. And if, we see life as a bunch of a series of uh, lessons and blessings and not take anything personally and just kind of a be, the, be the observer and not the reactor um, and respond to situations as, as uh, you can. Like sometimes a, no response is a response, is the best response. So you don't always have to respond either. You could just kind of, let things die out and let people talk and walk away you can set your boundaries that's the way i do i don't hear anna either but can you hear me uh yeah oh, i hear oh, okay, i hear okay. you sorry yeah sorry i was just in, in the middle of something so i couldn't unmute <laughs> myself the, yeah the second question is about being related to your culture in any way possible shape or form all right um sorry i forgot the other question um Culture, I'm related to culture and all cultures, um, not specifically my own, uh, but definitely have, obviously, I, I was brought up by my family who's from Turkey 
and uh, we're Armenian from Turkey. So, um, so we are Turkish Armenian and, and, um, yeah, I have some culture that I still keep, like, I don't allow any shoes in the house and, you know, I, you know, have certain standards for, um, hospitality in, in my life. Uh, so like, you know, if my friends come, come over to my house or any guest comes over to my house or my exhibition or whatever, I made sure that, that they're well fed, taken care of. And, and, um, they never feel like they're not at home. Um, <clears throat> so that's like a thing that, you know, stuck with me and, I learned from my family and from my culture is to always be uh, hospitable, always be kind, and uh, don't wear shoes in the house. Thank you for that. We, that's actually something we re we really have in common in, in our household. So I appreciate Sarkis for answering these questions for me and uh, uh, keep Keep creating, keep inspiring. Um, again, I appreciate you and everyone who actually took the time to listen to Sarkis. He's amazing. Mm -hmm. Anyways, have a wonderful Friday, guys. I'm going to uh, uh, mute out. Thank you. Anna. Thank you. Thank you. Anna. Thank you now we're going to go next to the gentleman, Luco. <laughs> How you doing, brother? <laughs> yo, yo, what's up, fam? How are you, familia? How are you? Hey, fam. What's up, Luca? How's it going, bro? I'm amazing, bro. I'm so happy to be here for real. First of all, I want to give the flowers, of course, to the beautiful host, and Carl and Jennifer for this amazing space. Thank you. Every single week. Super dope moment. Super, super fun. And thank you so much, Sarkis, man. I really, really appreciate you so much, man. I, I'm super happy to hear from you, your story a little bit more. Um, to meet you more, you know how I mean. So that's that's the vibe. Um, I actually have one question, and it's um, about the travelers. How do you see the traveler? Do you see it like a movement, or you see it like a brand? It's definitely a movement. It's definitely an expression. Um, it's an authentic expression. It's not a brand. It's not a character that I created for uh for likes or views or anything like that it's definitely um it's me it's who i am right the travelers are me i am the traveler i am the time traveler and i am expressing my truth and uh with each traveler um i'm i'm expressing energy and and um and the moment in time um and also, you know, um, I'm going to be telling more stories going forward with each traveler and the travelers will be, um, you know, continuing to share more insight, um, wisdom and kind of like words of, um, empowerment and, and, uh, you know, kind of like what I've been doing with my good morning posts with with uh like the photos of, of me and you know having like a quote um like an inspirational quote of sorts and uh, and write the time traveler instead of my own name because they don't belong to me these these thoughts don't belong to me they're uh they're for everybody and the time traveler is everybody so bro thanks i love love that answer so much um, i ask you because i actually since i meet you i feel so connected i'm not gonna lie i see you as like my super dope uncle <laughs> with like because we have like a similar vision our 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 our, our form of creation like that flow is so similar I, I feel just so connected with you and i wanted to ask you that because well you all know we have like talking spaces and all the things like my movement my personal movement is art is living a lot of living so i feel so connected with that idea so thank you so much man for that response i love it and i'm super super glad to be on this space today thanks so much fam gracias 
I big big help to all of you. Thank you, Luca. Much love to you. And I definitely, uh, you know, feel connected. And I love what you say about art and how you create. And, uh, there's definitely, um, you know, there's a connection in our, in our frequencies, 100%. Thank you, Luco. Have a good Friday. Have a good weekend, brother. All right, I'm going to go next to Akash. How you doing? Hello, hello everyone. Hi, Kash. Hi. I wish you all a fantastic day, and I would like to express my appreciation and gratitude always to my amazing hosts, Jennifer and Jan Carlo. And also, hello everyone in the spaces Anna, Anastasia, Zura Saga, Carlos, Nefemi. Hello, everyone. Wish you all top of the day. So, and now we have the legend himself, Sarkis. And this is my the first conversation with you. I deeply respect this opportunity. So while I'm not an artist myself, my interest lies in AI and medicine. However, I have always had a deep love for designs and artwork since my childhood. Now I'm exploring the world of art and Web3 for the first time. And I believe it presents a golden opportunity for discovery. As just Jennifer expressed her tweet yesterday, we, when new tools are provided, it's a crucial to get an early and learn. Every decision yields exponential ex results. And I believe that wholeheartedly. So artist, you yourself, how do you approach the intersection of art, technology, and human emotion? How can technology enhance or deepen our emotion connecting to art? Because I believe every art has an emotion that connects us. Yeah, that's a great question. And something that like I would really dive deep into another time as well. But um, right now, I would say, in short, that technology has the ability to to connect us to people who are not in our vicinity and um, we can connect with people all over the world it's a global connection uh, and uh, I believe that there's nothing that can replace in person emotional connection to art and to people so there's nothing that is actually going to replace that but it's going to be a great supplement and it's going to allow us to, and it is allowing us to connect with people who we wouldn't normally be able to connect with based on our geolocation. And uh, it's going, it's helping us connect in different ways, like, you know, using the metaverse, v VR, um, like going into spatial gallery and um, like what we're going to be doing on Tuesday in my space, um, we're going to go into the spatial gallery and look at the art. If you have a VR headset, you can connect deeper to the artwork that way. And, and there's definitely ways to connect deeper using this technology and uh, using voice, for example, that like we're using right now, voice and video. Um, we're able to connect deeper uh, more than texts and, and images that we did. Uh, prior so yeah oh wow i completely agree with you and i haven't considered all these things before thank you so much and thank you jennifer jen carlo and sarkis and everyone thank you thank you akash i appreciate your questions thank you akash Hope you have a great day, great weekend. I know we have one one more speaker, and I know that we gotta kind of try to wrap it up, right? So, hey, David, how you doing? Um, hey, guys, how's it going? It's going well. Good to be here. Hey, David. It's wonderful. Hey, Jennifer. Hey, Giancarlo. Hey, Sarkis. It was awesome to hear you talk about your art, art, and history and stuff. Um, yeah, I loved hearing the conversations because I. We've had a few before about your flow state style and stuff, and I've been doing that style for a while. And I just, 
think it's really cool to, you know, connect with people that kind of think the same way as far as their way they're doing their art and stuff and how they're making it. Um, the way you're, when you were talking earlier about how, like, like how, how does it come about? Like, do you have any thought of where it's going to go? And you're like, no, it's just like kind of, it's almost like improv. Like you just kind of seeing as it goes on to the, to the paint and to the canvas or, you know, digital. It's like, that's so cool to be able to figure out like an image from that, you know? Yeah. Thank you, David. Um, yeah, man. Yeah. I, we definitely resonate there. Um, I love your artwork too. And Thank you. I've seen your paintings and, and your glass work and all of that. It's it's great. And um, yeah, yeah the flow keep... state behind glass is awesome. Uh, I, yeah, I, 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 like, I want you to try it one day. Yeah, I got to use the glass more. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get more into it. I've painted on glass before. Um, oh, cool. Really, yeah, yeah. I, I I really love the the layers that you can you can build on glass and then build layers of glass too. So yeah, fun, yeah. They're, they're so cool because it becomes like three dimensional and stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. Well, I did have one question. Um, your human travelers, like the one like in your PFP. Like, do you have like a certain person in mind that you're doing? Because in from what I'm seeing, it almost reminds me of you yourself. And I know you had explained earlier that like travelers like encompass everyone. But is that like like yourself kind of like in the travelers? Like, yeah, yeah, I love that question. Wearing hats. And it is. Um, it is an expression of self, but not me uh as sarkis so self is encompassing of all um of all people who are who who are all tuned into this collective consciousness so the time traveler actually represents all men all people all humans Mm -hmm. Uh, but it is a reflection of self right (laughs) an alien yeah Uh, Yeah, but it's it's a reflection of it's a projection and reflection of self. And uh, there are some um, aspects of, of like my visual space in it sometimes, I guess, sort of like subconsciously. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's definitely not like on purpose. I'm not trying to draw myself at all. Very beautiful. I love that answer. Yeah. Thank you. I find myself when I'm painting like my self portraits, I'll, I'm always best at painting them because I feel like maybe it's just because it's myself and I know myself the most maybe. Yeah. And maybe subconsciously, like some of your travelers come out as like an image of yourself. Yeah. And they're images of me in different timelines and different, um, different dimensions. uh, dimensions. Yeah. The multiverse. Yeah. Yeah. We're, you were talking earlier. I think we're definitely, created somehow from aliens like we're like genetically tweaked a little bit from the the caveman yeah. to where mm-hmm. we are now yeah the, and also I mean, there, was, there was an intervention there somewhere yeah for sure i mean yeah. there's no scientific proof but it's kind of no. there like as an observer you kind of see see what it is yeah so, for sure yeah, I agree with you. Oh, it's two, two, two. Yeah, I got a time right, travel, guys. Has got to go. But th- thank you, David, for coming up to speak. Thanks, everyone. That was yeah. Here thanks for having me, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank and- you, David. Thank you, Giancarlo and Jennifer. I love you guys. Thank you for having the space and having me here. Really appreciate um, you know every everybody who came as well and asked questions and listened and watched and all of that and. Whoever is going to watch this later, I appreciate you guys too. Um, yeah, just uh, one love and uh, just keep creating, keep being yourselves. That's all I want to say. Thank you, Sarkis. Yeah, thank you so thank much, you, man. It's been an absolute pleasure having you here. Uh, hope you have a wonderful Friday, wonderful weekend, and also look forward to, to look for looking forward to your space next Tuesday as well. So. Thank you. Thank you. I'm looking forward to your spaces as well. All right. Take care, guys. Bye, everyone. Bye. Take care.